All right, so we've got some GDP information so far. The next thing that we want to look at is CPI. If, if you want to consider um, kind of the, the grand triumvirate of economic indicators, I think those would have to be GDP, CPI, and unemployment. We'll get to unemployment in just a bit. All right, CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. It's not an average, it's an index number, and there is a big difference between those two things. Now, how is the CPI calculated and what is it for? The way economists come up with this number is that they add together the prices of a market basket of consumer goods. So it uses a market basket. Now the market basket has to have enough variety of stuff in it that an increase in, say, one or two prices, like when the price of flour went up, in the last couple of years, doesn't throw our whole economy out of whack on paper. Because that did not cause inflation across the board. It caused the price of bread to go up. Well, that's bad if you're buying bread, but that's not inflation. It's one input that affected a lot of different products. So you have to have a pretty wide variety. Now, over time, what happens is that there are some products that people stop using and new products are introduced. And as those trends kind of go through the economy, the composition of that market basket has to change. Think about the market basket like you're going into the grocery store every week and you load up your little shopping cart or buggy, depending on which term you prefer, have your little buggy, and you put all the same stuff in at the same brands, the same quantities every single week. Are the prices always going to be the same? The answer is no. And what happens if over time we see that composition of the market basket getting more and more expensive? If it's a wide enough variety of goods, then that seems to indicate that prices across the board are rising. That's the problem of inflation. So, using a market basket of about 300 consumer goods, we add up the prices we add the prices and then we divide that by the total for a base year so you have all of the prices added together in a big lump and you divide it by the total for a base year, and you get an index number. Again, it's not an average, it's an index. Now, what is the point? You take the CPI that you get, say, today, and you compare it to the CPI from maybe six months ago, or last month, or a year ago, and you look at how it's changing. Let's say, for example, that you see the statistic that the CPI is up 0.2%. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. That's probably fairly typical. If you go back, however, and look at different countries at different points in history, what if you had a 10% increase in a month? That would mean that your prices across the board have increased. What is the big deal for consumers? Okay, yeah, stuff is more expensive. What does that mean? One of the biggest problems with inflation is that it erodes buying power. It doesn't mean that the 10 bucks in your pocket is not still worth $10. The face value hasn't changed. It's not printed with disappearing ink. But the problem is that with that $10, you now can't buy as much stuff. With the increase in prices, your buying power has now been reduced. That's the problem with inflation. It's going to hurt some people worse than others. We'll get to that in just a minute. But using that market basket, we add up the prices.
prices, divide by a base year, we get a number that allows us to make comparisons to different times and different situations throughout our own history. You'll always see the CPI in terms of, you know, is it up from the previous quarter, is it up from the previous month. If you want to see some really good historical data on any of these indicators, the website to go to is Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's bls.gov. That one is absolutely reliable for any of these updated numbers. So who makes the decision about what goes in the market basket? Honestly, I'm not sure what entity of government decides that. But some government entity has yes. like a typical lump of, okay, here's our buggy full of stuff. Exactly. For 19 for 2009. It's right. And it would make sense that that has to change over time. And as the composition of the market basket changes, we also have to change the base year. Because a base year that was relevant 20 years ago may not be the best thing to look at today. 